Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams again, and today I'm here with something else related to the central limit theorem, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, or as we like to refer to it as P hat. Let's talk about how this works. So we know from past experience that the central limit theorem can be applied to sample data. And in this case, the distribution of the sample proportion, p hat, will be approximately normal when one of two conditions is met. First, the population from which the sample is drawn is normal. Remember, normal populations give us normal samples. If we don't know that our population is normally distributed, or we might know that our population is not normally distributed, then we're able to apply the central limit theorem to sample proportions when n times p is greater than 5 and n times q is greater than 5. Remember, n is your sample size, p is your probability of success, q is p's evil twin. It's the probability of failure. And because p plus q always equal 1. If you're given P, you can find Q. And if you're given Q, you can find P. So as long as one of these two situations is in place, then we can go ahead and apply the central limit theorem to the distribution of sample proportions. So we're going to start with um, a national survey that was done that showed that 21% of Americans are close to their credit limit on one or more of their credit cards. We take a random sample of 600. Now I want to know what's the probability that more than 150 of those sampled will be close to their credit limit in one or more of their cards. So what have they given us? Well, the population proportion, P, is 0.21. Remember I said that Q was P's evil twin. So in order to find Q, I'm simply going to take 1 minus P, and that's going to give me 79%. I was told that I had a sample of 600, and so that becomes N. But now I've got to figure out what do I do with this 150? It's 150 of those sampled, which means it's 150 out of the 600 that I sampled. And lo and behold, what does that become? That becomes P hat. P hat will always be found by taking those who have the characteristics you want, X marks the spot, out of what you have which in this case is a sample of 600. And so when I do that small piece of math, now I know I have P hat equal to 0.25. And as long as I have P and Q and N and P hat, then I can go ahead and test for the applicability of central limit. So I'm going to take P times N, and I'm going to take Q times N, and I need both of those to be greater than 5. And so I find that P times N is 126, Q times N is 474, well beyond what I needed, which was simply to be greater than 5, so I can check the box and move on with central limit. So what I've done is I've just sketched out um, what the problem looks like. So we knew the population proportion was 0.21, and we're trying to find the probability that our sample proportion will be 25% or greater. And so the area that I'm looking for is this small area in the tail of the curve. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to do what I do best. I'm going to convert that P hat to a Z score because I have normal distribution. I can use the standard normal distribution table. And in order to find the Z score 
for a sample proportion, I'm going to take p hat minus p, remember I'm looking at this distance, and I am going to convert that into units of standard deviation, in this case by the standard deviation of p hat, which is also referred to as the standard error of p hat. And so what that becomes is that becomes p hat minus p divided by, and down here we have p times q over n, and then square root the whole deal. So multiply your p times your q first, then divide it by n, then take your square root so that order of operations doesn't give you a headache, honestly. All right, let's see what that looks like. So I've zoomed ahead in time and I've done this math. Remember we said that the z-score was p hat minus p divided by the standard error, the proportion. When I took my 0.21 times my 0.79 divided by 600 square root, I get this 0 0.0166. I generally think it's a best practice to go four decimal places. So now I've plugged it into my z-score formula. Here's my p hat, right, which we calculated. Here's my p that was given. My standard error of the proportion gives me a z-score of 2.41. And so what I need to find is I need to find the area associated with this 2.41 standard deviations above the mean. So I'm going to show you how I found it on my normal distribution chart. All right, my normal distribution chart represents the area from a point on the curve back to the center of the distribution, and my z-score was 2.41. So I'm going to find the point at which that row and this column intersect, and so now I know that I have 0.4920, or 49.2% of the data is located between 2.4 standard deviations above the mean and the center of my distribution. And again, I've got my 49.2, but you'll recall from our um, picture right, that we wanted the area beyond that point, that 0.25, and so I know that that 49.2% of the data is located in this area. I know this whole side of the curve is 0.5, so I subtract the 49.20 from the 0.5, and it gives me, isolates this little area in the curve. Let's look at a better looking picture of this. So this is what I ended up with. Um, I ended up with 0 0.4920 here. When I subtracted, I ended up with 0 0.0080. Move my decimal place two places to the right to give me 0.80%. And so what I know now is that out of my sample of 600, probability that my sample proportion, in other words, the proportion of people who say they are at their credit limit on one or more cards, the probability that I would get a sample proportion of greater than 25% is this little slim chance of 0.80% or 0 0.0080. So once you uh, meet the criteria to use the central limit theorem solves like any other normal distribution question. I hope this helps. Um, check out my YouTube channel for other videos on other fascinating statistics topics. Have a great day.